Ahoy there, YouTube haunters. Brad Goodspeed here. <laughs> Alright, so this is it. Part 3 of our tutorial on making skulls. Now, just a quick note before I continue. Got a note from a commenter on Facebook that uh, Sculpey 3 clay is very brittle and that Fimo is a much better solution to make the teeth out of. And I have to say that I agree. Um, a couple of the teeth snapped off on me here. Um, so definitely take that note if you haven't uh, made your teeth already. Now, time to make this thing look gross. Now, a lot of people do this using latex and cotton, stuff like that, but uh, I'm going a different way this time. What better to simulate rot than rot itself? So instead of adding some sort of special effects material to this sculpture, we're gonna add bacon. The added benefit is it's going to stink, too, when it's all done. Actually, I'm being informed by my legal team and the Department of Health that that's probably not a good way to go. So, instead, we're going to turn to latex and toilet paper and then paint to get this thing finished. So I hope you've enjoyed all the steps so far. Time to finish this baby off. So, here we go. Start with a disposable brush. I keep lots of these on hand and uh, tear, uh, put a bunch of sheets of toilet paper together and then tear the corners off so that there are no hard straight edges on them. Uh, you want a disposable brush because latex will gum up in the bristles of the brush when you're all done and you'll never be able to use it again. So that's why I said disposable folks. So here you go, you're brushing uh, latex onto the skull in all the places that we didn't do any sculpt. And what I'm doing is just taking toilet paper and just kind of um, loosely dropping it on there allowing wrinkles to work their way into the sort of the fabric of the toilet paper as I put it down. I've heard a lot of people say to use uh, different kinds of um, toilet paper or paper towel because they have certain textures. I think more of the texture comes from the way that you lay the, fa the uh, paper down onto the, the armature. As you can see I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to put it completely smoothly down. I'm allowing wrinkles into the paper. And then basically I just put it on top of a thin coating of latex and then brush latex on top of that. You could do many more layers of this stuff, but um, it's not really necessary. I, I just do one. And the other thing I do is I move into the area that we did sculpt. You can see there's a couple of little places here where um, I'm, I'm sort of intruding onto the sculpt because we want that kind of natural skin or grime texture that's created by the latex to uh, not look like it's only in that one place in the back of the head that would look too uniform so see right even the forehead I'm even though that's a sculpted area I'm sacrificing that and uh, putting some of the toilet paper and latex down there uh, just to give it a more homogeneous feel um, working on this stuff uh, you kind of have to you know use your eye take a step back you can see right now I've added some of it coming sort of out of the nose there because I thought that would be a good area for grime to be coming out of. Um, the other thing you want to do is even if there's an area like underneath the skull where you're not really going to concentrate too much on putting paper, just give it a quick uh, brush of latex there as well, just because that means it'll all take paint um, the same way. Uh, now what I've done there is I'm just basically creating a large pool of uh, latex so that I can do this. What this is called is making nernies. And that's something that's done in the effects business. Uh, you basically take latex and you kind of roll it up and then put holes in it rolling up. And I'm putting it around the skull here based on an idea I saw from uh, uh, the Spooky Skull tutorial that you can find on uh, YouTube. Just Google that, you'll find it. Um, a guy who had a great idea to make this sort of webbing out of nernies and just all I'm doing it here is kind of, I wrapped it around the skull and I'm putting a little latex underneath so that it'll, it'll stick on there. Um, the elasticity of the uh, of the nerdy is is enough to keep it on there, but um, just to make sure it doesn't shift around. So here I'm using uh, some very dark brown paint. Um, it might seem extremely dark when you put this on, but uh, I like to start with a dark base coat and then bring all the highlights up through dry brushing afterwards. So I'm starting off with a small brush here just to make sure I get in underneath the, the kind of the latex nerdy and into all the fine details. And eventually I switch to a larger brush like right there just to kind of start coating. You'll also notice that I taped off the eye so that that's um, not going to take any paint. I use masking tape and then just cut 
Lots of small little triangles and then work them in there using a skewer to press them down right into the corners so that paint, minimal amount of paint gets onto the eye. The other thing you want to avoid painting here um, are the teeth. We're going to do give those a separate treatment later. Uh, right now I'm just wiping some of the paint back on the latex, the nerny that's stretched around there. Um, it just latex has a, its own very similar to skin kind of color so I don't need as much paint on the latex. I end up adding a lot later when I start doing the detail work but every once in a while you'll see me just kind of wipe the, this, this dark brown paint off of, uh, off of the, the latex parts uh, just to let some of the natural texture come through. Now I've added a lot of water to this paint right here because I'm, I want it to work its way down into the nooks and crannies. There's so much detail that we've, we've put into this piece that you don't want to uh, miss any of it uh, because again, I'm going to be, uh, I want this to be like a base coat. I'm just showing you here the first coat that I did. I ended up going back to do a second and then that's what it looked like. Um, that's pretty much good enough for us to continue and now we're going to start doing the dry brushing. So for dry brushing I use a number of different colors. Here I'm using, uh, I think this is a raw sienna and I'm just using a little bit, taking a very dry brush, making, knocking most of it off of the brush onto my palette there before applying it and then applying it very light with a very light hand onto the sculpture. Uh, the reason you want a very dry brush, you don't want the, wa the, the, the paint lit watered down at all here and you want to use a light hand is that you want to just hit the highlights, all the texture that you went through the trouble of creating, the dry brushing will pick that up but the lower parts where we put the darker color, that's going to remain the darker color. So I'm just going at it here, going all over and uh, you know, just being very light with it and I'm going to switch up colors here momentarily I imagine. Uh, I, I like to start sometimes with a cream color. Right here I'm using raw sienna instead but sometimes I do this with a cream color. It doesn't matter. You're going to end up applying so many different ones. The, the color here may look dramatic somewhat but uh, by the time it's done you'll be surprised how it, it, it ends up looking pretty much just brown. Um, the eye sees all these different colors and it just kind of blends together. Here I'm using some yellow ochre paint, which is just a color. Um, you could use any color you want. You could use um, a brighter yellow or you could use a, a cream again. Just go with a, another contrasting color and I'm especially hitting this kind of latex nerny here to give it to make sure it stands out on top of the of the sculpt itself. This is supposed to be kind of some sort of decayed flesh that's kind of wrapped around the head and as you can see I'm dry brushing it kind of everywhere on the sculpt. You want to hit all these highlights with increasingly brighter colors and you use less and less of it each time. So now I'm going to more of a banana yellow especially focusing on the nernies but going after the highlights just trying to um, make all those details that we put so much work uh, into uh, we want to make them pop and show up. So you can see now why we started with such a dark color. We end up hitting, you know, brightening up the whole piece with these additions of color as we go along. Now here we're all staying on sort of the same kind of palette from the brown to the kind of the orange to the yellow, but I'm going to vary it up again with some uh, green in a moment here and there you go. Um, I just buy very cheap craft paint whenever I can. Again, this may look a little bit comical to you to to the eye when you're applying all these colors and think well that doesn't it might not look right to you but just have have a little bit of faith and and and, and keep at it and as you add more and more colors um, it'll start to, uh, to to feel more realistic as you as you get further and further along with it now um, I eventually have now I'm even actually adding a little purple here underneath the eyes um, just to give them kind of a sunken feel you can get away with surprisingly um, bold colors. So you may want to, you know, play around a bit before you decide exactly what you want to do. But um, also remember that these things are going to be under haunt lighting, so uh, some of these colors may not seem um, so bright once you get into that situation. Now this is a tandy leather uh, tattle sand, uh, saddle tan color. Pardon me. And uh, this is just a leather stain, and I'm applying this to the teeth. Uh, to give them a, a grimy look and then I'm gonna wipe them off. Uh, you kinda wanna get all around the teeth. This is kind of like a red leather stain. I use a paper towel to, 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 to wipe them back a little bit. 
But uh, now I've taken off the tape, and uh, another thing I'm doing is that I cut the bristles off my brush, and I use some kind of watered down red or different colored paint, and I just flick it at the uh, sculpture, and what, what that does is kind of break up the skin texture a little bit, and adds kind of a, a nice detail. Uh, just skin has all kinds of flecks of color all over it, especially rotting skin. Now here I'm using leather stain again, and what I like to do here is because the stain is kind of slightly transparent, you can kind of add it everywhere. I'm even adding it to the eye to give them sort of a bloodshot look, and I wipe that back a little, and I even use just a water a brush with just water on it later to just to just scale that back even more. But I apply the leather stain in all kinds of places, like under underneath the latex and uh, places. It, it gives a little bit of a shine to certain areas, and it makes it look, as you can see there more dirty. I go around the deep recesses of the eyes and kind of around the nose and underneath the uh, the latex bits. Now this is high gloss acrylic varnish that you know I got from the art store and I always apply this to teeth and to the eyes. You can see my eyes, my glass eye there has taken a bit of a beating or plastic eye I guess in the process of this whole thing. So I add some gloss back to the eye. It pools in there a little bit but later on I'm gonna kinda of brush it out. And then I'm adding varnish to wherever that latex nerny is all around there and um, basically that'll give that another texture that kind of stands out from the rest of the sculpt so that you know that's supposed to be kind of a separate element and I also kind of add it anywhere on the face that I want to look wet so I always put it kind of around the eyes and kind of coming out of the nose and dripping off the lips. Um, it's a really interesting and uh, nice extra element to add to props because uh, you know, just with all these paints, everything, and then props everywhere, I see them all the time, have a very kind of matte, flat finish, and it just looks painted. It doesn't look gross, because this this is the one way to make something look, like, legitimately gross. You get a reaction out of people, because if something looks wet or slimy, it, it instantly looks 100% uh, more disgusting than, than something that isn't. So, again, I'm hitting those latex bits so that they look slimy. And here it is. This is really kind of poor lighting. This thing looks a lot more severe here than it is, but I'll show you a couple other pictures that I took. And um, that's the sculpture. I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out. I like the Nerny thing, but again, if it's your first time, you may want to skip the Nerny um, and then try it on a subsequent one. The whole advantage to this process is that you can make dozens of these things for very little money. The initial price of some of the materials may cost you a buck or two, but uh, since the styrofoam skulls are so cheap to start with, if you get your hands on a few of them, you can literally make yourself a hundred of these things and uh, put them all over your hunt. That's what I do. Uh, I like each one of these I do better than the ones I did previous, and this is probably my new favorite. Keep trying these, and you know what? There's uh, no wrong you can do. And it's quite easy to make stuff that looks better than most of the things you can find in a store, at least in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed all this. I'll do more tutorials throughout the year as I think of them, but uh, that's making skulls. Happy hunting.